it's rolling. Correct. Okay. Correct. We're good. Hi, folks. It's Switchback. If you're anything like me, you either love to or want to recreate where there are bears. Not because of the bears, but because they choose amazing places to live. So this video is going to cover day hiking, backpacking, and car camping. So of course some tips like keeping food in your car, whether or not to do that, are certainly going to be relevant more to car camping versus backpacking. I'm not going into polar bear precautions because those are most decidedly outside of my wheelhouse. These precautions not only protect you and other users of the outdoors, but also the bears, because bears who become habituated to people and certainly ones who become comfortable with approaching people or associate people with food either get relocated, which they often find their way back, or they get put down. Research bear behaviors in the area in which you're headed. And you can see a lot of that information a lot of the times on the official websites. And then you can also see anecdotal experiences on places like All Trails or Outdoor Project. You might also get other anecdotal information from Reddit or from Facebook. But of course, any of this information should definitely be verified. Do your own research rather than relying on someone's comment online. Be conscientious of the time of year as well. So for example, in the fall, the bears are in hyperphagia, which means that they are trying to eat and build up their stores for winter. And so they're going to be more food aggressive during that time. They might also be more that way when they come out of hibernation and they haven't really been eating over the winter. Know the rules, regulations, and recommendations for where you're headed. Recommendations, I say that because a lot of times those come ahead of regulation change. Regulations require a certain amount of bureaucratic process and so they can lag behind what actually should be done in practice. If you're RV camping, then you need to look and see what is allowed wherever you're headed. Some places, for example, don't allow tent trailers. If you're going backpacking and a place recommends a bear canister, take a bear canister. Bears tend to be out more at night than during the day and particularly at dawn and at dusk. Most of my personal bear encounters have been first thing in the morning. And while bears do hibernate, they can also be out in winter. One of my stories is in Yosemite on New Year's Day. Try to avoid any heavily scented detergents, especially those fruity ones. Walk by smelling like a fruit roll up, not a good idea. Next topic, food storage. And all of your smellables are going to be categorized in with this. And that includes even things that are unscented, such as sunscreens, lotions, soaps, etc. Common smellables will include chapstick, sunscreen, toothpaste, deodorant, toothbrush. Even in your car, if you've got ketchup packets or you've dropped french fries somewhere between the seats into the abyss between <laughs> the seat and the center console. Gum and food wrappers, citronella, bears are really drawn into citronella. Any other candles, sprays, etc. Pet food and products, trash. Don't forget to empty your pockets of snacks and wrappers when you go to bed at night. And that includes your personal pockets that you're wearing and your backpack pockets. Even your unopened cans and food pouches need to get stored properly because bears can still smell those. Many places with a bear presence are going to have bear boxes. And of course, if they are available, use them. Your ice chest, your any of your food, your smellables, all of it needs to go inside with it latched properly. When we've gone hiking or backpacking in Yosemite, they have a whole line of them over by the trailheads. Use those for every smellable that's in your car. Okay, bye smellables. See you in a couple days. There we go. Good to go. Like I said, ketchup packets, it's all those things, and put them in there while you're out on a day hike, but just don't lock it because those are shared. Latch it, but don't put like a personal lock on it. We use Yeti Tundra ice chests, and these are considered bear resistant when they have two locks on the front corners of them. They're IGBC certified, and so if we're in bear country, those are what we're using with the locks. In some places, like in Tahoe, you also need to take a bike lock so that you can secure said ice chest to the bear box or to your picnic table or something else where it can't be dragged off because a bear will try. 
If given the opportunity, a bear will drag off your food and then take the time to try to bust into it to get to all the good stuff inside. So this is called a knockoff Yeti. I don't even know what brand this is, but it is definitely not an actual Yeti. This is the difference it makes. If you're backpacking and there are not bear boxes at your site, then you need to either hang your food, use an earth sack, or use a bear canister. I have very strong opinions about this. Uh, you can see my video about how I feel about earth sack, and you can see my video about bear canisters. I'm gonna put those down below up here at the end, I'm sure. Do what's appropriate for the bear behaviors and of course for the regulations for where you're going. If a canister is required, and you don't own one or you don't want to buy one or you're only going to need one once then you can certainly rent one. Places like REI, some ranger stations, I know the national parks like for example Yosemite does rent them um, but there are a lot of different resources online and in the parks for renting bear canisters. I am aware that some people sleep with their food including experienced hikers, through hikers, etc. I cannot in good conscience recommend this. It don't, not only attracts bears, but it also attracts rodents. Hike your own hike, do what's right for you. It's entirely your decision. Um, be aware of the regulations and the hazards where you're going. Some places are more high risk than others when you're in camp during the day and, you know, keeping, you know, a bear box or your bear canister open, you know, if you're making sandwiches or you're, you know, what, whatever you're doing with your food, um, some places you really have to be scrupulous about keeping everything locked up except what's immediately in front of you. This isn't the case in most places but in the Sierra, in Tahoe, in Yosemite, in like a lot of that whole area, it's, you have to be very, very watchful. With that in mind, keep your campsite crumb clean. Don't like wipe crumbs down on the ground and pack out any food peels, wrappers, anything else if you're out on a hike or in camp. Some places recommend storing your food in your car. And again, this goes back to knowing the bear behaviors where you're going. In the Sierra, this is a fatal mistake. However, on the California coast, it is a recommendation. So again, this goes back to bear behavior. Now that said, there are always exceptions. I know I've seen comments online of somebody in the redwoods where a bear still tore the door off of their car to get to their food. So whatever the most secure way you have access to is to store your food, go with that. Obviously, again, within the regulations of where you're going. If you're hiking or backpacking and let's say that you're going swimming or you're collecting water and you're away from your pack, if you have more than one person, then ideally that there's somebody that stays with that stuff. Minimize your time away from your pack if you are by yourself. And if you do have your food with you, then you need to store it properly. So I've taken my bear canister with me in order to, if I know I'm gonna be away from my pack a lot, like if I am swimming and that kind of thing, then I have done that and then stored my bear canister away so that it's still properly stowed. Ultimately, just try to minimize the time that you're away from your pack and from your food. Set up your shelter, whether it's your tent, a hammock, etc., away from where you're cooking, preparing, eating food, storing food, should all be away from your shelter. Get these three sites as far apart as you can. The specific recommendations on these vary anywhere from 100 feet to 100 yards, but there should be three sites. Your shelter, where you're eating and cleaning and doing all that kind of preparing food, and then where you're storing everything. Try to keep your shelter away from dense vegetation, berry bushes, things like that, where bears tend to go to kind of hide or of course to feed. When it comes time to go to sleep, you will be convinced that every sound is a bear or whatever the predator of your choice is. Even if a bear does go through your camp, and they may, it's really not an issue unless there's something there that they can access. For example, I did not know about citronella and how drawn to that bears are and made the mistake of leaving that out overnight 
well, not for the full night because a bear ate them um, <laughs> when I was in Tahoe. And we heard the bear, but we didn't know what it was. And then we could hear the bear was in the next site over where they were still up and cooking. And they ended up making a lot of noise, you know, using pots and pans and chased that bear up into a tree. So if I am car camping nowadays, I will keep a pot and lid or, um, you know, a metal spoon or something like that outside of my tent in case I need to scare off a bear. And depending on where I'm backpacking, I'll put my pot on top of my bear canister in order to shoo off a bear if I hear one. Whatever you do, if there is a bear in your camp, avoid screaming or making any kind of high-pitched noises. Next topic is hiking in bear country. And so hiking solo does put you at higher risk than hiking with a group does. That said, I would never dissuade anyone from hiking solo as long as you're able to do so safely. I am primarily a solo hiker, primarily a solo backpacker. So just stay aware of what's going on around you. Trail running is not recommended when you're in bear country. You know, again, a, when you see, when a bear sees you running, it triggers their prey drive. And so uh, it can be a problem. And I know from being a trail runner that when I'm running, I'm in the zone and I don't, may not hear what's going on around me. So, uh, or be a, paying as close of attention, so just keep those things in mind. But in general, trail running in bear country, not recommended. So while you're on the trail, look for signs of bears and just be mindful. So things like bear scat, paw prints. Oh, here we go. That's definitely a big paw print right there. Holy crap. <laughs> oh my God, that's a big print. Huh? That is a big print. <laughs> Damn, it's literally like the size of my foot. That Torn up logs where they've gone for grubs and such. Um, it's new, fresh scratches on a tree and tall vegetation may hide bears so just be aware don't let small children run ahead or wander without an adult staying on the trail rather than going off trail will reduce your risk of running into a bear it's a good idea to carry a ziploc bag or something else to put any food wrappers or other trash into so that you're not smelling up your clothes like food I've seen people recommending bear bells. Uh, these are not something that bears associate with people. And so the sound really doesn't alarm them. It doesn't scare them. It doesn't trigger them to think that there might be a person coming. So they're just going to annoy you and your trail mates. In fact, wind and ambient noise like moving water, or, you know, a creek, a waterfall, etc., can impact whether or not a bear can hear you. So if you're coming up around a corner, and even a distracted bear, if they're eating or something else, they may not hear you approach. So it is important for you to stay aware of your surroundings. For example, so again, the Yosemite bear story. When Mountain Goat and I were hiking in Yosemite over near Hetch Hetchy, we were coming back from the Rancheria Falls Trail. And um, we had just seen a mountain lion, or a, yeah, not a mountain lion, thank God, mountain, mountain lion. Um, she had just seen a bobcat back at the falls and so she was kind of wigged out it was her first time seeing a bobcat um and i was hiking ahead of her she was behind me and we weren't talking at that precise moment and i looked up ahead of me a little bit over to my left and i was like oh that's a bear and the bear was equally startled and it went and it basically took itself behind a tree there was like a tree like this and it moved its head behind like a two-year-old so like I you can't see me now <laughs> it was quite cute actually and the bear was maybe 10 feet off the trail um and so we kept walking around watching very closely of course and um I wish I had gotten this on video. She was so freaked out from the bobcat that she was like, don't even video it, just go, just go. <laughs> um, but now in hindsight, of course, she's like, man, I wish we had a video of that. But yeah, that was definitely the closest I've personally been to a bear. Um, but it was also one of the cutest things I think I've ever seen a wild animal do. It was really sweet. So with that, you try to make your presence known when you're on the trail. And so especially if you're approaching, you know, bushes or a blind corner, or certainly if you're getting into um, like berry bushes or anything like that, anywhere where a bear might be hiding, make your presence known. So you can clap your hands. You can call out, hey, bear. Um, I personally don't want anyone to think that I'm seeing a bear. And so I personally tend to say things like, hey, nature. Hey, nature. Hello, nature. I hear it. 
hear something. Is it a human? Yeah. <laughs> Just because, like, like I said, I, I don't want someone who's coming, you know, from the opposite direction to be like, oh my god, did you see a bear? <laughs> so just my own personal preference, but you can do what works for you. Ultimately, your voice is the best way to alert them to your presence. With regards to pets, keep them with you at all times, ideally on a leash, and that includes at night, keep them in your shelter with you. Never just tie one up outside overnight. It's, you know, like the goats in Jurassic Park. <laughs> they can't protect themselves whatever kind of animal comes after them. But again, keep them on a leash because they also have a prey drive. And if they see an animal and some, you know, some dogs are more distracted than others, it can trigger their prey drive and they can go chase a bear or worse, get chased by a bear by their prey drive. And their barking can intensify any kind of bear encounter. Additionally, an off-leash dog can entice a bear back to you. Some common questions about being out in bear country. When should you carry bear spray? First of all, be aware that bear spray is not a repellent. Do not spray it on you, on your gear, on your site, anything like that. It is to be used in a, as a defense mechanism. If you are carrying it, then you need to keep it within arm's reach. I keep mine in a holster if I am carrying it. Keep it where you can grab it immediately and know how to use it according to the manufacturer's instructions. Check if it's allowed or even necessary where you're going. I rarely carry it. Um, it's rarely necessary in black bear country. When I do carry it, it's more for mountain lions, um, which again, I have thankfully not seen a mountain lion yet. Hopefully never do at this point, but my encounters with black bears have taught me that they really have very minimal interest in me. Grizzlies and brown bears are a whole other beast and you do need to know what the behaviors are and again, what the regulations are for where you are going. Only pull out your bear spray if you are in immediate danger and do not deploy it unless a bear is a direct threat to you, like as in charging you. And if you do have to deploy your bear spray, then leave the area immediately because that spray can actually attract more bears. Sounds counterintuitive, just how it works. Should you carry a firearm? This is a hot topic, but they are not recommended for protection from bears. It is really hard to hit a bear that is charging you and it puts those around you at risk. If you do injure a bear, it can worsen your attack because an injured bear will get more aggressive. Again, this goes back to look at the rules, regulations, recommendations for where you're going. And if you do opt to carry a firearm, make sure that you're doing so legally and that you know how to use it properly. Do you need to store the f clothing that you cooked in inside of your bear canister or other food storage container? Ideally, yes, ideally. Um, do the best you can, but don't sleep in the same clothes that you cooked in. There's rarely room for your clothes in your bear canister. So just <laughs> try not to spill too much food on you. If you do spill something on you, it should probably go into the bear canister. Next topic, encountering a bear. So what should you expect if you do see a bear? It most likely wants nothing to do with you and just wants to be left alone. It may be curious about you and it may stand up on its hind legs because they do have poor vision. It may do a bluff charge, which is basically where it runs at you and then it goes off to the side at the last minute. And this is gonna look different than an actual charge. Um, like. A, a real charge, they're usually gonna have their ears down, their head's gonna be down more, versus a bluff charge, their ears are usually up, their head's up a little bit more. Um, either way, it's terrifying, I'm sure. <laughs> but it may also smack its jaw, yawn, put its ears back, growl, or do other behaviors if it's feeling threatened. What not to do if you see a bear? Number one, run. That is the fastest way to trigger is prey drive. And a bear can run about 35 miles an hour. And I don't know any humans that can. So no matter how strong of a track star you are, don't run. They can run really fast uphill, downhill, doesn't matter. Do not approach the bear. God forbid, don't ever approach the bear. Don't make any sudden movements. Avoid getting small or getting close to the ground. Don't drop your food or otherwise leave it. A bear that, again, that associates, a bear that gets that food reward becomes a bigger problem. 
don't climb a tree to get away. You know, grizzly bears and black bears can climb trees. Never, of course, get between a mama and her cubs. Most of us know that, but it's worth saying again. Don't drop your pack. You can use that for protection in the rare case that you are attacked. And don't make high-pitched noises or scream or squeal, anything like that. Um, that can make that bear think that you are a prey animal. Think of the way your dog loves those squeaky toys. Same thing works for bears. So we've talked about what not to do. Let's talk about what you should do. Stop and make yourself appear as large as possible. Wave your arms overhead, but slowly. Don't make any sudden movements. With a black bear, get loud. Make your presence known. With a grizzly bear, you're going to keep your voice more low, but either way, use a low tone. If you have small children with you, try to pick them up. Avoid bending over if at all possible. If it's in your camp, quickly stow away any food or carry it with you, like if it's in a pot or on a table or something like that. Use pots and pans to try to shoo it away. If that doesn't work, then you start throwing things at them, like rocks and pine cones and, I mean... I can't believe the things that we've thrown at bears, uh, or a bear anyway. But this is, in my experience, pretty effective. I ended up throwing a lantern at one in Tahoe. If you're on the trail, try to sidestep the bear or back away slowly. Never turn your back to the bear. But if the bear follows you, then you stop and hold your ground. Next topic, what to do in the rare chance that a bear does attack you. I'm going to talk about what happens with a black bear versus a brown or grizzly bear. With a black bear don't play dead. Fight back, aim for the eyes, the face, the muzzle. Those are the sensitive areas. Fight for your life. Use anything you can, like rocks, sticks, your fists, whatever you have. With a brown or grizzly bear, you do want to play dead and you want to try to get on your stomach with your hands behind your neck and your legs spread so that you can prevent that bear from flipping you over. Ideally, you'll still have your pack on, but obviously you don't get to make a choice at that mat at that point. Do everything you can to keep from that bear flipping you over and try to stay as quiet as possible because again, you're trying to play dead and you want that bear to lose interest in you. Stay quiet and still until that bear has stopped and has left the area. Fighting back will only intensify things. However, there will hit a point if the bear is still attacking you that it is time to fight back aim for that face. And again, fight back any way you can with anything you can if you're in that situation. This is even more rare, but if a bear does attack you in your tent, doesn't matter what kind, then you definitely want to fight back. So if you would like to see the video about the bear who tried to steal our Yeti Tundra ice chest, I have that video here and I have another one here all about bear canisters so that you can protect yourself and bears from getting your food. Thank you so much for watching. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Get out there, bear country's beautiful. Take care, bye-bye. In Utah, okay. Or, you know, anyway.